Hello teacher. Hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on conventional practice and sectioning. In today's lesson, we will see the basic rules and standards in drawing any sectional views. As you remember in our previous lessons of this chapter, we have seen the different types of sectional views. The types of sectional views are named as full section, half section, offset section, broken out section, revolved section, and removed sections. Let's briefly revise them as usual. A sectional view obtained by passing the cutting plane line fully through the object is called a full section. In order to obtain the sectional view, the right half is only imagined to be removed. Arrows on the cutting plane line indicate line of sight for the sectional view. Objects that are symmetric can be shown effectively using a half section. Half sections expose the interior for one half of the object and the exterior of the other half while one quarter of the object is removed. While drawing a half section, omit hidden lines from both halves of a half section whenever possible and use a center line to divide the sectioned half and the unsectioned half. In sectioning through complex objects, it's often desirable to show features that do not lie in a straight line by offsetting or bending the cutting plane. The cutting plane in this type of sectional view offsets or bends in 90 degrees. The bends in the cutting plane are never shown in the sectional view. All of the sectional views mentioned earlier use the cutting plane line on the orthographic projection to show where the section is taken. Broken out and revolved section do not use cutting plane lines. Rather, the sections itself are drawn on the orthographic view. Removed section, on the other hand, broke some of the rules of projection. Let's see. Broken out section is used when only a partial section of a view is needed to expose interior shapes. This section is limited by a break line on a standard orthographic view and do not use cutting plane line. Revolved section showed the shape of the cross section of a bar, arm, spook or other elongated object by placing an imaginary cutting plane line across the object and by rotating the longitudinal section perpendicularly along the axis. The visible lines adjacent to a revolved section may be broken out if desired. Removed section is one that is not in direct projection from the view containing the cutting plane. It shows the cross section of an object, but the sectional views can be drawn outside of the view aligned to the cutting plane or placed elsewhere in the paper or in the drawing sheet set. Sometimes these sections are enlarged to emphasize the detail of the object. Removed sections should be labeled and arranged in alphabetical order from left to right. Sectional views have an imaginable value in helping to understand the structure of any object. Yet, there might be a situation that the types of sectional views we have seen my not help pass enough. There are other sectional views type which are completely different in a way of projecting them. We briefly saw the aligned section in our previous lesson. Let's revise it along with the new type of sectional views called auxiliary section. The word align means in a row or in a straight line. An aligned section, therefore, is a sectional view that shows 
all of an object's features in a row or a straight line. Not is in the top view of the object. The features that extends from the main circular part of the object. It's angled to the right of the object's vertical center line. The cutting plane that divides the orthographic view is angled as well. However, unlike an offset cutting plane, it's not bending at a 90 degree angle. The cutting plane in an unlined section is always bent less than 90 degrees away from the object center line. Students, now look closely at the object's interior. What do you see? Where is the extended feature positioned? This is what makes aligned section views unique. Though in orthographic view, the feature is drawn in an angle, but in the sectional view, it's perfectly aligned. It's in a straight line with the main circular part of the object. The bent cutting line in the orthographic view is straightened in the sectional view to show the interior detail of the object in one row or a straight line. Well, students, let's check your understanding of an aligned section with an activity. Draw the orthographic view of the given axonometric drawing as usual and place the cutting plane for the aligned section. Then, draw the aligned sectional view of the object. Teacher, please assist your students.
Welcome back. I hope that wasn't hard enough. Let's compare your solutions with mine with the following illustration. The cutting plane in an unlined section is always bent less than 90 degrees away from the object center line. So in orthographic view, the feature is drawn in an angle, but in the sectional view, it's perfectly aligned. It's in a straight line with the main circular part of the object. The bent cutting line in the orthographic view is straightened in the sectional view to show the interior detail of the object in one row or a straight line. In previous chapter of this television lesson, we have seen an auxiliary view. We have also seen that an auxiliary projection is used when an object have a surface plane which is not parallel to any of the principal projection planes. An auxiliary projection plane is a projection plane which is parallel to the inclined or oblique surface of an object so that the true shape and size of the object is projected. An auxiliary section has a similar function with an auxiliary view. Let's see. A sectional view that appears on a plane inclined to any of the principal projection planes is called an auxiliary section. The auxiliary section is projected into a position on a drawing so that the line of sight for the view is perpendicular to the cutting plane line. It used to show the shape of a surface cut by a cutting plane or cross-sectional shape of an arm or a rib inclined to the regular planes. An auxiliary view in section is drawn by the usual methods of an auxiliary view projection. I hope you noticed that auxiliary sections have some similarity with the removed section. Both types of sections mainly show the cross sections of an object outside the main orthographic view. It's said that an auxiliary section is used to show the cross section of a rib or an arm. Don't worry if you do not know those terms because I'll explain them to you later with other terminologies. Let's have a quick activity for now. Draw the necessary auxiliary section for the object which will be given on the screen. Don't forget to help each other while doing your sketch too.
Welcome back. Did you get the right auxiliary section? Well, check that with the solution I am about to give you. I'm sure you remember that we can draw partial auxiliary views of an object with short break lines. Let's see. Students, sometimes the level of confusion in some sectional views representation can be reduced by violating certain rules of orthographic projection. Some objects have characters on which their sectional view gets more confusing when it's truly projected. Let me clarify that to you by starting with the basic terminologies which you should know first. Rib and web are thin, flat feature of an object that acts as a structural support. A spoke is the road radiating from the hub to the rim of a wheel. Hub is the central part which supports the shaft, while rim is the circular frame of the wheel. Leg is an ear which is built as portion of an object for attachment. Keyway is a slot or groove within a cylindrical tube or pipe into which a key fit into a key seat will slide. In this case, the key is a small wedge or rectangular piece of metal inserted in a slot or groove between a shaft and a hub to prevent slippage. When a machine part had a rib, spoke, lug, or web, which is cut by a cutting plane, a true sectional view taken through the part would prove to be false and misleading, because the section would cause the object to appear solid. The preferred treatment to avoid a false impression of thickness and solidity is the sliced ribs, webs, gear teeth, and other similar features are not hatched with section lining even though the cutting plane slices them. Students, compare the true section with the conventional section by looking at the following examples. A rib, a web when it's cut flatwise, a web when it's cut crosswise, a spoke, a lug. Students, I hope you have understood well. In your grade 11 technical drawing, you have learned about the different kinds of break lines. The short brake line, the long brake line, and the cylindrical brake line are used to, for long objects that have to be drawn on a small scale to fit them on the paper. It's recommended to remove its long portion which contains no important information and draw the brake lines at the broken ends. The drawing of some objects can fit to the paper with the good scale in their one dimension while their other dimensions cannot fit to the paper with the same scale. In this case, the uniform portion of the object can be cut away and represented with break line. Short break lines are thick rack line which is drawn with a free hand. The short break line is basically used for objects with rectangular cross sections. 
The short brake line used for wooden and metallic objects can be slightly different. The cylindrical brake line is used for solid and tubular objects. The brakes used on cylindrical shafts or tubes are often referred to as S brakes. The center of each curve is found by drawing two lines which are 30 degrees to the boundary and the center line of the object. The intersection of these lines is the center of the curve which goes halfway through the object. If the object is tubular, the cylindrical brake line will be doubled to show its hollow part. Cross hatching is often added when showing a cylindrical conventional brake. Conventional brake lines can also be used with sectional views of long objects. As we have said earlier, in today's lesson we will see the conventional practice in sectioning. Conventional means something that different peoples or countries are great upon. In our case, the sectional drawings that we may give the same meaning to any professionals in the whole world. Students, while we go through this chapter, we have made different rules which are used in conventional practice in sectioning. Let's summarize some of these rules. A cutting plane may be offset in order to cut the object in such a manner to reveal an important detail that would not be shown if the cutting plane were continuous. Section views can replace the normal top, front, side or other standard orthographic view. When more than one cutting plane is used, it is especially important to label them for clarity. When a cutting plane coincides with a center line, the cutting plane line takes precedence. When a cutting plane line would obscure important details, just the ends of the line outside the view and the arrows can be shown. A section lined area is always completely bounded by a visible outline. All visible lines beyond the cutting plane for the section are usually shown. Hidden lines beyond the cutting plane line are usually not shown unless they are absolutely necessary. Exceptions include threads and broken out sections. There should be no lines in the hatched area. Section lines should be parallel, uniformly spaced and in the same direction. Section lines should never be parallel or perpendicular to the object lines. Use standard section lining or hatch to show materials. In half section, either center line or a solid line is used to separate the two halves of the view. For extremely thin parts of less than 4 mm thickness, the parts should be shown in solid black or without section lines. For example, sheet metal, washer and gaskets. Partial sections are becoming more popular. Several different partial sections created and combined to give better detail and information about the specific areas of the structure. When drawing an aligned section, the angle of the cutting plane can never be greater than 89 degrees. Omit the section lines on the section view of rib, web, and lug. If the cutting plane is passed flat wide through or a, a spoke if the cutting plane is passed long way through. For long objects that have to draw in a small scale to fit them on the paper, it's recommended to remove its long portion which contains no important information and draw the brake lines at the broken ends. 
Some more rules on a sectioning practice are concerning the sectioning of assembled parts. Assembly drawing is the drawing of a part consisting of different elements at their fit together in their rightful position. Assembly sections also allow the view of how the parts function. Section views are often used to create assembly drawings. Assembly sections allow better clarity with a complicated assembly of parts. In assembly section, different parts use different hatch patterns. Usually, on a view showing assembled parts, the section line on adjacent pieces are drawing in opposite directions at an angle of 45 degrees. But the portions of the cut surface of a single piece in the same view or different views always should be section lined in the same direction with the same spacing or pitch. Solid features that do not have interior structure are not hashed. This means an exterior view is preferred for shafts, rods, bolts, nuts, screws, rivets, and so forth. Well, students, we have covered an important concept in technical drawing. In the practical world, sectional views are commonly referred as details. Sectional views cover the broad category of isolated and enlarged drawings, which together was the plans and elevation for the complete set of working drawings. And that brings us to the end of this lesson, as well as the end of this chapter on sectional views. Students, please keep practicing the exercises from your textbook on your practical periods. And teacher, please assist your students on their needs. In our next lesson, we'll begin a new chapter, dimensioning on which we will see the introduction of lines, symbols, and reading directions of figures. Until then, goodbye teacher, goodbye students.